Okay, you got excuse. Where's your bike? In the shop. In the shop. In the shop. <laughs> I like that. That was good. In the shop. I like that. How about you, little baby? How about you, little baby? Where's your bike? Huh? Hopefully tomorrow we'll fire this thing up. So the next step right now is to shave this gasket um, to get the head ready to put on. This gasket extends up beyond the case. You just kind of shave it down. Just make it nice and flat. Just kind of go real slow. You don't want to scratch the cases while you're doing it. You just make it nice and flat right there. And what I do too is I put a little Yama Bond on it. Um, I love this stuff. We'll have a whole video just on Yama Bond and what it can do for you, what it can't do for you, when and when you should and shouldn't use it. There we go. Just kind of, just kind of trim them back. Keep the cut edge right there next to the case. Because you're trying to get as flat a surface as you can. I got the circlip in that side of the piston. So I'm going to start the pin from the other side. So that arrow typically means forward. Sometimes you'll get an I. If you get an I, that means intake. And on the two stroke like this, that would be on this side. This has an arrow. That means exhaust. It's facing forward. So um, I've already got the needle bearing oiled that's why i'm not oiling the rod and the pin i've already got the bearing oiled so okay you can't see in the light up there but that's a good wrist pin bearing and a good wrist pin and good rod and all that all used parts but they're okay now the main thing about putting circlips in these two strokes is, oh my gosh, don't drop it down in the engine. It's a pain to get them out. You need magnets. You guys know the difference between a motor and an engine, right? A motor's electric. That's why you have a starter motor. Um, motors are electric. Gasoline engines are engines. So this is not a motor, it's an engine. So don't drop this circlip down into your engine. So I'll show you how to install it. Start by putting one side in with your hand and just kind of tucking it up in there and then follow it with the pliers. As I wipe the dowel pins off real good and got them taken care of. Here's how you do your base gasket. Okay, see how I got that, guys? I got this rod coming up through this hole here. The base gasket's laid back. There's a coolant transfer hole for the coolant to get down on that part of the case from the head and the oil the jug. Here's the big coolant transfers on the exhaust side. For right now, I'm going to reuse these rings. And when you do rings on a two-stroke, you got to understand you're dealing with these pins here, locator pins. Piston rings on a four-stroke can rotate any which way they want to rotate because the cylinder wall is smooth all the way around. On a two-stroke, you have ports in the side of the cylinder, and you can't let the sharp edges of that ring on the end of that ring catch in a port. So they pin it, and they locate it, and these pins are not allowed to rotate freely. They are held in rotational location by these pins. So let me show you a little trick how to install them. Okay, see how I did that? I held one edge of the ring against the pin, 
and then work the other side of the ring around kind of folded it over till they were in place so at this point guys we're ready to slide the jug on guys, I'm gonna film this from here because there's just no way there's just no way for me to juggle that camera with my mouth and trying to do two hands and do these rings so we're gonna film this step like this but you know the ring pins are in the back of the cylinder in the back so we're gonna start installing the jug from the front of the piston and we're going to push the piston into this area of the jug and then we're going to try to fold the rings in and slide it up in there without breaking anything okay here we go That wasn't too bad. That went a lot easier than some of them do. Alright. Make sure you keep it in a straight line because remember you don't want to snag your rings in a port. And we gotta get our rod, our power valve rod up in the hole there. Like that. We start engaging the studs. Double check the dowel pins. Dowel pins are good. Base gasket's good. Base gasket's not pulled or tearing anywhere. Rings are in place. We're good. That's it. Jug's home. That's the power valve working. Down, see the governor down the bottom? I'm overcoming it with my thumb right now. Normally at low RPM you'd be riding like that. Then the governor would start to centrifugal force apart and it would push up. And when it pushes up, it's going to open the valve. Okay. All right, guys. I'm ready to bolt the head on. Let's do it. Still got our head gaskets in place. Doing good. Get our little crush washers up here. And you, you torque the head down on a crisscross pattern, just like I showed you with the other stuff. You just, you just always do a crisscross. All right, I gotta get the right tool to. Oh, here we go. I think I have it. Okay. Yep. There we go. All right. See if I start on this bolt, right? And I, there I go. Now I go to this one. Now I'm squeezing that whole side of the head down, but not here. And then I go here. Then I'm squeezing this whole part of the head down, and this is all loose. So I start here, just snug it, and then I come over here, just snug it. Then I go over here and just snug it. Then I go over here and just snug it. Okay? Then I go up here and just snug it. Alright? And then I go here and just snug it. So now what I have is I have six snug bolts that are holding that down in place. So now I'm going to ramp it up a little bit. I'm going to put a little pressure on. Here we go. Okay, now I'm going to put 18 foot-pounds of torque on it. There's my torque wrench. See my torque wrench right there, guys? That's my torque wrench. It's calibrated. 18 foot pounds. Here we go. Okay, that's it 18 foot-pounds on that head ready to go but anyway long story short for corrosion protection I made the decision I am gonna go ahead and spray paint it um, so I'm gonna leave the cover off on the magneto side because I don't want to get 
spray paint on the black wires that come out. I want to leave the black wires look black. There's nothing cheap, cheaper looking. There's nothing grosser looking on a motorcycle than to have spray painted electrical wiring. I mean, really. I mean, that would almost be as bad as spray painting a shock. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, no, it's worse. It would be horrible. Speaking of shocks, I'm so pleased with how beautiful this one came out. Look at that. Look how pretty that shock is. Bam! All right. I'm going to uh, spray paint this tomorrow, early in the morning, and then get it in the frame. And then after I get it in the frame, I'll put the electrical parts back in it. And uh, hopefully we'll hear this thing run tomorrow.